I'm joined by Clancy Hattelberg. Thank you so much for being here today with us. It's an honor and a pleasure, Beth. You were one of the first U.S. Navy divers to reach the Apollo 11 crew when they came back from the moon, correct? I was. Tell us about that rescue. Well, I'm very uh, grateful to have had a chance to be a part of the Navy NASA team that was dedicated to bringing the astronauts home safely and very proud that we did. This mission had uh, a little bit of difference between the other ones because the astronauts were actually going to land on the moon and there was concern that uh, they might bring back a lunar pathogen. So the decision was made to quarantine the astronauts um, when they egressed from the command module, which meant that they had to wear a uh, biological isolation garment. It was impermeable. Mm -hmm. uh, and since they were putting it on inside the command module, make sure they didn't get any lunar dust uh, on them. And then anything they touched had to be decontaminated with betadine. And were you doing the D? I was uh, the officer in charge of the swim recovery teams for Apollo 10 and 11 and the designated uh, decontamination swim for 11. Were you concerned about uh, mm -hmm. them bringing back pathogens? Uh, no, because I believed uh, in what I was doing. The, compared to today's standards, of course, it was probably pretty crude, but it worked. I mean, the suits were impermeable. It would keep anything, uh, a pathogen, inside the suits that the astronauts were wearing, and I was wearing one, so anything that was outside couldn't get in to harm me. And we were wearing a gas mask that filtered the air that they breathed out and filtered the air that I breathed in and everything was going to be scrubbed down. So I believed it was going to work and it did. Thank you so much for talking to us. We're going to go over to Marty to learn a little bit more. Okay. This is the mobile quarantine facility that the astronauts were whisked into once they got back to the USS Hornet. It's on display here at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin spent 88 hours inside this converted Airstream trailer. They were flown back to Houston where they were transferred to a quarantine facility for 21 days. That was how long it was thought it would take for the astronauts to get sick if they had brought back germs from the moon. Once the doctors were sure they were not infected with moon germs, they were allowed out of quarantine. We're gonna do a very simple activity to help you learn about the spread of germs. And all you need is a little bit of hand lotion and some glitter. The hand lotion is gonna represent our oils on our body. I rub that on there. And then the glitter, it's gonna represent the germs. Get a lot of germs on there. Look at all those germs. Ew! I'm gonna give a high five to my imaginary friend. Let's see what happens. Ooh! Look at all of those germs just from a high five. This is why washing your hands is so important and not just running water over them, actually washing them. Look at what happens to the glitter when I just wash with water. Still a lot on there. You should wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Here you can sing whatever space song or other cool song you like to help you know how long that is. Most folks wash their hands for only about five seconds. Washing for 15 seconds gets 90% of the germs off your hands. If you wash for 20 whole seconds, you'll get 99% of the germs off your hands. It's also important to dry your hands. Wet hands spread germs more easily. Spend those extra few seconds to make sure that you and your friends are healthy and safe. Well, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were in quarantine, they had a lot of time on their hands. They filled out paperwork, read newspapers, and Neil even broke out his famous ukulele to play a couple of tunes. Neil Armstrong even celebrated a birthday while in quarantine. What would you do in quarantine? How would you fill up all that time on your hands? Let us know down in the comments section. And if you like this video, be sure to follow STEM and 30 on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the National Air and Space Museum's YouTube channel.